As consoles get more powerful, games get bigger. Developers are constantly adding things to games to take advantage of the capabilities of modern consoles. And with Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo competing for gamers' attention, newer, more powerful consoles are always in development. But as consoles get more powerful and games get bigger, we sometimes find ourselves pulling out the box under our bed, blowing into our NES and SNES cartridges, and slamming them down, and spending hours playing the classics. These games are more than simple nostalgia. They are high quality games that were impressively developed with limited resources. In the retro game series, we will explore what makes these games so fun to play, even when newer, shinier options are available. For our first rummage into the retro games bin, we're going with one of the most impressive achievements in gaming history, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is often considered one of the greatest games of all time. It has received perfect scores from IGN and Nintendo Life, just to name two, and has been remade for smartphones and handheld consoles. But what makes Chrono Trigger such a good game? Why are audiences still buying and enjoying this time-traveling adventure? The major reason Chrono Trigger is so beloved is its perfectly structured story. The adventure of Chrono follows the hero's journey. The concept of the hero's journey, also called the monomyth, was introduced by scholar Joseph Campbell in 1949. Campbell studied the stories of cultures from around the world and made an interesting discovery. Every culture from every time that has ever written about heroes has written their stories following a pattern. Campbell was the first to identify and put names to the steps that have been used to write the tales of heroes from the beginning of time. Here's a simplified version of the key steps of the hero's journey as described by Joseph Campbell. Number one, the normal world. The hero is a normal person doing normal person things. Number two, the call to adventure. Something happens that pushes the hero to act. Number three, crossing the threshold. This is when the hero goes from ordinary life to the special world. This could be an actual place or a change in the character that alters the way their world works. Number four, trials. The hero faces difficulties and through those trials learns and grows. Number five, approach. The hero begins the last march towards the ultimate conflict. Number six, the belly of the beast. The most difficult task, the biggest fight, the final conflict, aka the boss fight. Number seven, reward. The hero receives something as a result of their triumph over their enemy. This can be anything from a treasure like gold to an important life lesson or ability. This reward brings the hero or those around him some sort of benefit. Number eight, the return. The hero is back to his ordinary world with the treasure. In many hero's journey adventures, the hero dies or nearly dies, but is somehow saved from death. This step is called resurrection and could fall in many different places in the sequence of events. The genius of Chrono Trigger lies in the way it follows the monomyth. Chrono and the player are the hero with a thousand faces described by Joseph Campbell. This is why Chrono Trigger has resonated and will continue to resonate with players. Let's look at specific story details from the game and see how well it follows the monomyth. The first thing players notice is the slow nature of the beginning of the game. We start by seeing the overmap, the ocean, a dock, and a small village. Chrono is asleep and only wakes up when his mom opens the curtain. Chrono, the silent protagonist, is seen in his normal environment. There is nothing special or unique about what we see at the beginning of the game. This is important for the rest of the story. It sets up Chrono perfectly to follow the hero's journey as described by Joseph Campbell. Chrono, and by proxy the player, begin the epic adventure in a very ordinary world. By showing Chrono in a very normal setting, the special world he later enters becomes more spectacular. Chrono is a regular young man who oversleeps and is about to go to a fair. There's nothing special or spectacular about him or his situation. The next stage in the hero's journey is the call to adventure. Chrono's call to adventure is when Marl is sucked into a time portal by Luca's teleportation device. Chrono did not look for adventure. He made a friend and that friend needed him. This is very typical of the hero's journey. The hero is thrust into the line of duty. After going through the portal, everything changes. The music takes on a different mood. A mist covers the land. The Millennial Fair is replaced by a landscape filled with monsters. The contrast is stark and gives the player a very real sense of we're not in Kansas anymore. Chrono and the player have crossed the threshold and entered the special world. 
Specifically, we have entered the year 600 AD, but on a larger scale, we've entered the special world of time travel. The next step in the journey is filled with trials. Chrono and company need to save a queen, travel to the future, travel to the past, travel to the not as distant past, and back to Chrono's original time. All the while, Chrono and company develop talents and gain treasures to help them on the way. During a particularly difficult trial, Chrono and crew face down Lavos himself in the Black Omen. Chrono, being the bad man that he is, sacrifices himself by doing the special attack he does thousands of times later without dying. The player is then offered a choice, resurrect Chrono or leave him dead. I personally have never left him dead, I mean, the dude sacrificed himself, leaving him dead would be heartless, like cold-blooded terrible person levels of heartless, but whatever, do you I guess. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, the, this is the resurrection step in Chrono's hero's journey. Now the stage is set for the final confrontation with Lavos, and we have entered the part of the hero's journey known as the approach. The player can now decide how to approach Lavos and whether or not to take on additional trials or side quests in preparation for the final battle. This is particularly interesting in Chrono Trigger because the player has so many options to choose from. When the player is ready, they face down Lavos and save the world, gaining them the treasure of, well, saving the world. On top of that, Chrono gains new friends and all of the valuable life lessons learned along the way. This fulfills the belly of the beast and reward part of the journey. Once the world is safe again, we see our heroes return to their homes. They have returned to where they began, they are back in their ordinary world. The story of Chrono Trigger is the driving force behind its success. The story of Chrono is the story of all heroes, it's the story of all of us. We connect to this crazy time hopping adventure because it is the adventure of all of us human beings. Our own stories are a hero's journey. In a very real sense, we are all Chrono. That makes this game timeless. Thanks for watching friends. Does your favorite video game character follow the monomyth? Leave a comment with your thoughts and subscribe for more dives into the classics. Thanks guys.